Oh, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to One Heart Live. We've got great guests in the studio. A fab competition coming up for you as well, plus a few lols <laughs> with a whole heap of chat. Not forgetting, Angie Lamar is back tonight with Home Sweet Home at 9 p.m. Now, um, we've still got Levi Roots on the hot seat. We've got Princess Naya as well. And we've also got Solomon Smith from the Bricks and Soup Kitchen. Hello. How are you? I'm fine, I'm fine. Welcome. Can, can we clap for him? Can we please? <laughs> <laughs> embrace, embrace him into our one heart bosoms. Ah, it's good to have you, my friend. Thank you, thank you very much. You guys are treating me very well today. Oh, bless you. You've been enjoying our grapes in the green Definitely. room. Definitely. <laughs> he says they're the juiciest grapes he's ever had in his life. Um, talking about uh, Juicy Juicy, mm. uh, you actually started the Brixton Soup Kitchen uh, how long ago? Um, when you were quite it. young, wasn't it? Yeah, I started, I've actually started it um, three years ago. You know, it just started off from absolutely nothing. You know, we just, um, we felt that there was a need and a lot of services wasn't kind of coming, filtering down to Brixton. So instead of me just keep on complaining about it, I said, let me just do something. Let's do something about it. Yeah. Let's see Solomon in action doing just that. When I was probably about 11, 12, um, I noticed there was a lot of homelessness in Brixton. There would be a lot of kind of homeless people I would kind of give on a day-to-day -day basis. My course in uni, they said, you have to do something for your work placement. You have to work somewhere where you've never worked before. But it has to be within the community, you know? So that's when I just said my next thing I want to do was um, work in a soup kitchen. You are, you are a multi-award winner. I actually had the honour of giving you an award last year. Um, you do amazing, amazing work. So I know that you feel there's a need in yeah. the community, which there certainly is, but yeah. how do you get funding for that? Do you know we've never had funding? We've really? Never had no funding whatsoever. Wow. And um, for us, you know, you know, a lot of organisations will be like, no funding, no service. You know, we actually done everything backwards. We said, you know what, we need to just do it. You know, forget about the funding. Let's just, you know, just start tapping into different resources, asking friends, asking families. And, you know, it's just having the community back in was the first thing. And now we've got that conquered. We're now looking for funding. That's fantastic. So you're going to do more across London then and not just in Brixton? Um, well, do you know, we've actually been contacted by a lot of different organisations. So um, we've had Hackney Borough wants us to do something over there. Also, we want to start doing some mental health. So I've got my mum and dad get, getting involved because they, they, they work yeah. along with uh, mental health as well. OK. Uh, so we're going to be start doing things like that. And I've also been contacted by an organisation who I used to work for in Miami. So we're going to be going over there, supplying food. Really? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I bet you're yeah. well excited about definitely, that. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. that's really cool. Yeah. Um, tell us about EP Records. Well, we've been working with um, an organisation called um, Unraveled Media, and they've hooked us up with a, um, a record label called E5 Records. And um, they've got a lot of um, artists on their record, like Popcorn and Joy Island. And they've just said they've seen us on social media. So as I was saying backstage to leave our roots, social media is very needed mm. because they've, they've, they've seen the work we were doing all day in, in Brixton. And they've said, you know what, we want to do anything what we can, you know, to kind of help you guys to raise money. That's so, so cool. So yeah, so working with Joe Island, working with um, Mini, working with Aisha, working with, yeah. That's it's, really it's cool. cool. Um, so we were telling Levi about Periscope, about Snapchat. He's yeah. got to get down with definitely. the program. Definitely, definitely. Levi's definitely. like, whoa. <laughs> uh, he's so good. He said yeah. he's going to download that as soon as definitely. he gets back. Definitely. And definitely. I heard that someone uh, pretty cool uh, designed your T-shirt for you. Is that true? Yes. Who? Who could it be? Oh, just the lovely lady sitting right next to me. <laughs> Princess Nile, <laughs> see you. <laughs> I almost forgot that. <laughs> She's like, who, me? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, so most of all of our T-shirts, all done by Bingy's Boutique, you know. And um, for us, it's just about, you know, working together, um, working with different agencies. Like for mm. myself, um, the soup, even my face is on the Soup Kitchen logo. You know, I've got a big team behind me. You yeah. know, without that team, as Princess Nine knows, I'm very unorganised. <laughs> you know, um, emails, do not connect to me on emails because I've got so much emails coming through. Mm. But my team, you know, they pick up the slack for me, you know. I've just got so much people helping me, you know, backstage. We've got Derek, who just made sure I got here on time <laughs> and making sure I'm doing everything. So, yeah, I'm just so glad I've got a good team behind me. 
Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so, we have got more people on our Living Legends list. Um, we've got Linford Christie, we've got Diane Abbott, and we've also got Eddie Grant. Do uh, you want to take a look? Go on then. Go, go, go. Linford Christie is a former sprinter that represented Team GB. During his illustrious career, he won eight gold medals and is the only British man to have won gold medals in the 100 metres at all the four major competitions open to British athletes. He was the first European to break the 10 second barrier in the 100 metres and still holds the British record in the event. Diane Abbott. Diane Abbott is a British Labour Party politician who has been MP for Hackney North and Stoke Newington since 1987. She became the first black woman to be elected to the House of Commons. She was also a shadow public health minister for three years. Did she see the reference to the virtuous circle of falling inflation and a reduction in interest rates? She is currently the shadow secretary of state for international development for Jeremy Corbyn. Eddie Grant is a Guyanese-British musician best known for his smash hit, Electric Avenue. In his career, he openly used his songwriting for political purposes, especially against the apartheid regime of South Africa. He founded a recording company called Ice Record, who assigned successful artists like Mighty Sparrow, Calypso Rose and many more. So, uh, loads of you have been getting online. Uh, we've been asking who your living legends are, and you've come out in your droves. I've got some here. Uh, DJ Sackett says Bounty Killer is a living legend. Uh, that's quite popular. Lot of mercy. Lot of mercy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Reggae Press Room is saying Supercat is a living legend. Yeah, yeah, I loved a bit of Supercat yeah. growing up. Um, Chow One Step saying Shabaranks is a living legend. Yeah. So we've got all these reggae artists here. Um, I always think uh, Shabaranks, I always think Maxi Priest and Shabba. Shabba. <laughs> uh, when, <laughs> when Maxi Priest comes on the show, which I hope so in a few weeks, that's the first thing I'm going to say to him. Uh, just saying. Um, Grace Jones, I think, is a yeah. living legend. Yeah. What do you think? Absolutely. Need more women in the list. That's the, uh, it's always brilliant when you hear more because they've agree. been such inspiration. To, to Absolutely, all of us. Yeah. I completely agree. Um, that was from our sound man, uh, Niels. He was saying that Grace Jones is his favourite. Um, but Living Legends is a big theme uh, throughout the day. Um, Jafus is saying General Degree is a living legend. There's loads of loads of the reggae mm. artists. <laughs> um, we have got someone on the line, Cece from Rejuvenate Jamaica Hospitals. How are you doing, Cece? I'm fine, thank you. I'm fine. And yourself? Yeah, we're good, thank you. So, what's happening over there? Okay, what's happening? Um, literally, we're preparing for our fundraising event, um, which is coming up uh, in November, the November down at the Royal Lounge. And we're just busy purchasing more equipment for the hospitals down there in Jamaica. Okay. Um, sorry, the line is slightly bad, so sorry for my delay in uh, trying to hear you. Um, so, when did all this start? What's been your inspiration? Okay, this all started in April 2013. Um, it all came about after I visited one of the hospitals down in Jamaica. And after my visit, I, well, I came across what I encountered. I just left Jamaica with this vision that I was going to do everything in my power to try and help um, with the hospital condition in Jamaica. So, uh, CC's been doing a great job, basically, uh, building hospitals in Jamaica and being quite an activist uh, like you, Solomon. Uh, CC, the line is slightly bad, so we're going to try and call you back and get you back on the line. Okay. Uh, but until then, we bid you adieu. Uh, speak to you in a while, my lovely. No problem. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye. Oh, she was lovely. She, she I love was, what she was yeah. trying to do. It's a bit like you, Solomon, yeah. with you, you're seeing a need. Yeah. And Cece's obviously seen a need in Jamaica. And so she's yeah, gone over there. Yeah. yeah, and she's mm. acting on it. Um, you know, giving something back, which yeah. is something uh, that obviously you're doing, Solomon. Yeah. So how has the Caribbean influenced what you do? 
um, you know, um, just my parents, and they've always just said, get up and go and do it, you know. And since um, I actually lived in Jamaica for a little bit, and all you saw was kids before they was going to school selling sweets. Yes. And that, and that for me, you know, you don't see that anywhere else. No. You know, I'm talking kids who's got no shoes that is out with bottles and just trying to anything. And, and it's and for and me, you get it's, that across yeah, the Caribbean. Yeah, don't and you? it's just any, it's just like any means necessary. Yeah. You know, and that's what made me come back and be like, no, I need to fix. You up. need to do something. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're all inspired. We're inspired by your story. Mm. And uh, by the way, you're not going anywhere because <laughs> I've demanded it. I've had yeah. the diva drop and said you're staying right here. <laughs> uh, so stick around for more Solomon, for more Princess Naya, and for more Levi Roots after the break. Some of the people, the actors, don't want to portray their stories anymore. They want to sit into a show that has nothing to do, nothing with, to do with the them. culture. Well, tough luck, really, mm. because you can be in as many Shakespeare as you like. I mean, <laughs> and if you don't know who you are, yeah. you just look like an idiot. <laughs>